good god just hit the gun safe door with my elbow scared the shit out of me all right what's up guys today we're talking about accuracy on the ar-15 tips tricks things you can buy things you can add things you can do skills gear i am no perfect expert by any means if you have a tip or an idea leave it in the comments um and hopefully this helps everybody else it's just stuff that i have learned that i like to use that works for me and hopefully it'll help you out a little bit as well along the way i had originally planned to come out here to the range and shoot but because i'm really really dumb i forgot some stuff at home and i just messed up the whole like shooting portion of the video so if you like the tips and you want to see how they apply during shooting on paper leave me a comment give it a thumbs up and i'll know that you guys want to actually see some shooting and i'll make a follow-up video let's go i'm gonna skip some things i'll try to just say when i'm not giving all of the information possible some of these topics get really really heady and really really deep and we could go on forever but there are other people out there who are better precision shooters than me with better videos that can explain individual topics ar accuracy tip number one from me uh try to mount your optic to the receiver here not to the handguard if possible there's a lot of different optic mounts out there that you can use to achieve this um you know some sometimes it might not be possible depending on the mount or the scope that you have or exactly how you need to mount it but if you try to mount it to the receiver the receiver is a single piece of solid material that can't really shift or move if you have part of it mounted to the handguard up here this is separate you can see that the handguard is completely separate so if this handguard ever shifts um, then part of your scope mount is going to be on it and it could impact your accuracy but if you have your scope mount or your optic mount solely on the receiver this is one solid piece of material that can't shift or move in relation to itself it's always going to be in the same place in relation to itself oh and before i forget about it uh second tip along the same lines for consistent accuracy tighten your handguard screws these loosen up a lot use blue loctite um especially with irons because i've got one iron back here and i've got one iron up here on the handguard if the handguard is loose it can rotate in relation to the rear iron um, so if you loosen this handguard up take it off clean the gun put it back on it's going to come back on in a different orientation. I'm sure it won't ever get exactly the same. So with irons, where you've got one back here on the receiver and one up on the handguard, if that handguard ever shifts, then your accuracy is going to get thrown off. Of course, they're iron sights, so you know the amount of precision accuracy you're going to get is kind of questionable anyways, but that's just something to think about. If you do have an optic that splits between the rail and the handguard, make sure those handguards or screws are really, really good and tight, and use some Loctite so they don't shift. All right, my next tip is to control your cheek riser or your comb for precision shooting. Now, I don't have an adjusted cheek riser here. I'll try to throw a picture up on the screen. Um, you can use something as simple as a piece of foam and some tape, which is what I've done in the past. When you get up behind your optic here, if you're, if you're floating your head around and you're trying to find the center of that reticle, any shift in your eye to the reticle can cause a point of impact shift downrange, particularly at long distances when we're really going for precision. So I encourage you to either buy a stock with an adjustable cheek riser so you can really get it dialed in to you, uh, or put one on there. The only problem, we start to run into some of the inherent limitations of the AR platform in that cheek risers tend to get in the way of the charging handle. It's very hard to get a cheek riser in the right place with the charging handle in the way. So, when that happens, you can do a side charging upper if you really want, so you charge up here. Then your cheek riser doesn't get in the way. Um, there's a few other options. There's some stocks out there. There are some stocks you can buy that have a cheek riser on them. Um, but inherently, the AR platform makes it a little difficult to get that cheek riser dialed in. But it is important if we're really going for accuracy. All right, my next tip. Again, we're talking about accuracy and precision on the AR platform. So I'm going to say... This is crazy, but maybe skip the cheap ammo. Ammo has a really big impact on consistency and consistency, of course, is the key to accuracy. So skip the cheap ammo, whoop, buy match grade ammo. Match grade ammo means that the ammo is loaded from the factory to tighter consistency and tolerances. So from round to round, you're gonna have less difference 
in the bullet, the amount of powder in there could vary. Uh, how deep the bullet is seated could vary. Exactly how well the cases are made, to what tolerances, all of that stuff can vary from round to round. With match grade ammo, the whole idea is that from the factory, they spend a little extra time, some more premium product, and they really tighten up the tolerances. Now, if you really want the best consistency, it has to be made exactly to your rifle, to your chamber, everything, blah, blah, blah. There's so many factors. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of all the factors that impact bullet consistency from shot to shot when reloading. But um, if you have the means to do so or the interest, maybe think about loading your own um, and learning all of the things that go into that because it will for sure create better consistency, which will lead to greater accuracy. All right, the next tip, if you haven't already figured it out from the clues, trigger press, super important. Mil spec trigger in this lower, usually they're pretty gritty. They've got a heavy trigger pull that can cause problems. There are plenty of shooters out there that have achieved great results with basic triggers though. So work on that trigger press and that trigger squeeze. Get away from jerking and yoinking. Gosh, there are so many videos out there from very, very talented shooters about trigger press that you can watch. I'm not gonna bore you to death with it, but basically, if you're jerking the trigger, you're gonna have problems downrange. <laughs> All right, fools, start using a rear bag. Definitely gonna improve your consistency and your accuracy. This is a crazy, crazy cheap one. Pretty sure I ordered it on Amazon. I'm also, I think I'm using uh, fish stones, like aquarium stones as a fill. Um, I don't know, I put this bag together when I first started shooting precision. I don't even know what's going on here. But even if you don't wanna buy one, get an old sock, fill it with rice. In fact, I think I have one in my car, a sock filled with rice uh, as my first rear bag. Um, use a rear bag. Again, this is one of those things where like rear bags, plenty of plenty of videos out there from good precision shooters. I'm not gonna go into crazy detail. Get a rear bag, start using it for precision. If you could, Stop the gun from moving when you pull the trigger from every single shot. Theoretically, that would produce an increase in consistency and accuracy, right? Well, the harder you have to pull on the trigger, the more force you have to exert, the more likely you are to disturb the gun while making the shot. So, basically, the lighter the trigger press, the less likely you might be to disturb the gun when making the shot. So an upgraded drop-in trigger that can literally just go in your upper from a good brand like Timony or um, some of the in-house brands even make them now that are pretty cheap. Like I'm pretty sure Palmetto State has an in-house drop-in trigger. Um, there's things you can do to stock triggers like polishing them up to make them lighter. You can use lighter trigger springs. Whatever you decide you wanna do, um, a lighter trigger, especially one with some adjustability and control, would help. There's plenty of videos out there. It's a deep topic. There's single stage triggers, double stage triggers, different weights. Everybody has a different opinion. But for precision shooting, assuming that you're not compensating for bad technique, again, remember, work on your trigger press, a light trigger can go a long ways towards helping with precision. So check out those upgraded triggers. Think about it. It might be something you want to do. This is not an AR. This is a big old 6.5 Creed with a break on the end. That is a muzzle break down there. Muzzle devices come in all sorts of shapes and sizes and flavors, like your standard birdcage that hangs out on the end of most stock ARs. Uh, the birdcage is there mostly to reduce muzzle flash and spread out the gases. Now you'll notice that there are no holes in the bottom side of the birdcage. They're all on the top. This also helps direct gases upwards, which drives the muzzle back down. That's important, but when we're precision shooting, what's maybe even more important is reducing the recoil of the weapon, mostly just to help tame down the scope jump and that sort of thing. But also, if you've got a lot of recoil anticipation, you're gonna jerk the trigger. You're gonna be like, Ready, ready, jerk, because you know that kick is coming. You're going to start anticipating it. So, while a muzzle device 
isn't strictly necessary. It may not be totally necessary to have a, a you know, to achieve precision. Muzzle device isn't strictly necessary. It could be useful, especially if you find yourself anticipating shot recoil. Now, another reason you might want certain muzzle devices, um, like tunable brakes, you can adjust it so that the amount of gas coming up the top of the brake is adjustable, and that'll help keep your scope from jumping so you can see your impacts or your misses and make adjustments on your scope that way. So there's reasons that, that can improve your precision with muzzle devices, um, but it depends on the muzzle device and how you're using it and how you want to use it. Look into muzzle devices, think about it. The AR platform doesn't have a lot of recoil to begin with, so this could be kind of a moot point, but it's going to be a personal preference thing. All right, thought experiment. Your optic is fixed to the receiver. The barrel, however, especially out here on the end, is sort of this long, slender piece of metal hanging off that's only attached right back here. Now, if you were to press on the end of the barrel and put force on it, you're going to deflect the barrel a little bit. You'll change exactly where the end of the barrel is compared to where it was when it's in a free state, when it's not being pushed on or pressed on. Now, that's a good part of the reason why the AR platform has this free-floating handguard, because anytime you push on the handguard, that energy and movement is transferred to the receiver, and it doesn't touch the barrel, because the barrel's free-floating in the handguard. That's super important. Now, the AR platform has a gas, um, a gas tube that runs up and touches the barrel. Now that inherently means that the barrel is not totally free floating. Like on the big old bolt rifle here, there is no gas tube that touches the barrel. That barrel is totally free floating and protected by the handguard. On the AR platform, that gas tube kind of inherently transfers a little energy and movement into the barrel. Um, but what we don't want to do is if you have a shorter handguard, you definitely don't want anything touching or pressing on the barrel. So that's another great reason to tighten up those handguard screws. Double check that your, your gas block is tight and your gas tube is installed correctly so that those aren't changing the way the barrel sits from shot to shot, um, all that sort of stuff. Just make sure that your barrel is not affected in any way by any outside forces because that's gonna change your shot to shot consistency downrange. All right, so maybe all this reloading crap just doesn't appeal to you and you don't feel like it, you're just gonna shoot match ammo. Well, I have another tip for you about how you can help improve that match ammo. Let's check it out. All right, my next tip kind of goes back to muzzle devices a little bit, but this is a weird one that doesn't get talked about very often, um, and it's a complicated topic. So please, if you're gonna go this route, get some more information, do your research. But here is a nifty little device called a barrel tuner. There it is. This threads onto the end of the barrel and it has a break on it, right? So it's got all these, these uh, spiral ports. And if you notice, I don't know if I can get it to focus up close. Can you see these numbers that are like etched onto, the, onto this nut? These screw in and out along the tuner. And the tuner, actually this tuner in particular, has little markings on it, almost like a micrometer. Um, so when you put this on the end of a barrel, when you put this on the end of a barrel and you move, you screw these in or out, you move where the weight sits on the barrel. And so when you think about, when you shoot a barrel, it's, it warps, it, it undergoes a bunch of different stresses and types of compression waves, blah, 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 blah. The barrel starts like flopping around like a piece of spaghetti. You can't see it because it happens way too fast but it does make a difference on where the bullets end up going down range, depending on, as that bullet, like, as that barrel warps, depending on exactly where the warp is as the bullet leaves the barrel, it changes where the bullet's going. I know it seems crazy, but barrel tuners are a thing that can help with that. Now, if you don't want to hand load, if you're shooting match ammo, you're shooting very consistent ammo, you can use a tuner like this, and you can adjust that tuner to help bring your groups in tight. I know it seems insane, it's pretty crazy, um, but a tuner could be a good solution for those who don't want to load themselves. And instead, a lot of that fine tuning that people do with load development 
you can get some of that back by using a barrel tuner. So look into them, do some research. There's other videos out there about them um, and find a tuner that works for you. There are tuners that have brakes on them. There are tuners that just slide on the barrel. A lot of different kinds of barrel tuners out there. It's kind of a weird, heady topic, but check it out. Wah! Ooh, ah! Last tip, shoot bigger groups so that you're not getting confused by factors that don't matter. Good God, just hit the gun safe door with my elbow, scared the shit out of me. All right, bigger groups basically means that you have a larger pool of data to work from, kind of statistically speaking. If you shoot more bullets and you average out where they hit, kind of law of large numbers type of thing, the more data you have to work with, the more likely it is to be accurate and not accurate in terms of like boom, boom, but accurate in terms of not misleading. Um, so, you know, five round groups, pretty common. At the very least, you need to be shooting three round groups. If you shoot one or two, uh, you know, you don't know, maybe I jerked the trigger, maybe something changed. If you shoot a two round group, anything could change. If you shoot a third one and it, it makes a pretty consistent group, then you got a pretty good idea you're shooting well. If you shoot five, you'll have a pretty darn good idea. Uh, these are just random low development. Uh, uh, this is a five round group. This is all from the 6.5 Creedmoor. These are random low development targets that I had sitting around. So that was a five round group with four and one hole and a flyer. Um, so a five round group, you can really get a good sense of what's going on. Um, you can even shoot seven, 10 round groups, whatever. It just depends on how many shots do you need to feel comfortable. If I'm prone and I shoot a three round group and it's, and it's way bigger than I think it should be, I'm probably gonna shoot a few more to see like, okay, what's going on? Is it me? Is the scope loose? Uh, whatever so you know basically the more precise you need to be with your with your shooting or with your data creation the more bullets you should shoot it'll give you more confidence in the final result all right we're out here at the range my goal was to come out here and shoot three different types of ammo and show you guys a difference in um, how different ammo shoots for a bunch of different reasons it just didn't work so maybe i'll do a future video comparing different ar ammo I forgot my front bag. I left it at home after I packed it. So I'm like shooting off of this, this like grocery bag that I found in the car and the groups were terrible. And like, I just couldn't, <laughs> we're going to leave, we're going to leave the group shooting for another video. Hopefully the tips at the beginning were helpful. And uh, if you do want to see precision hand loaded AR ammo, let me know. I'll do up another video. We'll talk about loading and, and grouping and we'll do more shooting. But anyways, Hope all of these tips helped. I am certainly no expert. Go out there, check out some other people's videos, um, and there's plenty of great info on the web. Deuces.